Benny program. Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you probably remember, last week Jack Benny was sick in bed. However, he's up and around now, so let's go out to his home in Beverly Hills. Jack is eating his breakfast. I'm glad you came by, Mary. Have a cup of coffee. No, thanks. How are you feeling, Jack? Oh, much better. Naturally, it was quite a shock being robbed of $10,000, but I'm all right now. Well, I just dropped by to say hello. I'm going over to the club to play some golf. That's certainly a lovely day for it. You know, Mary, I think I'll take up golf again. Oh, Jack, you shouldn't play golf. You take it too seriously. You always get so mad. I do not. You do, too. Every time you miss a putt, you accuse somebody of moving the hole. <laughs> I only did that once. <laughs> and another thing, you never keep your mind on the game. What about that time you got in the sand trap? You were there for two hours. Well, a lot of people play in the sand trap. <laughs> With a pail and shovel? <laughs> oh, stop, will you? I wish Rochester would bring my toast. I've almost finished my breakfast. Say, Jack, what's that little thing there on the table? This? Oh, it's a light fuse. I took it out so there wouldn't be any electricity in the kitchen. Well, for heaven's sake, why? I'm punishing Rochester. <laughs> Twice this week he came out of the kitchen and left the light on. But, Jack, shutting off the electricity. I know what I'm doing. <coughs> What's the matter? You're still coughing. Well, I'm not completely well yet, Mary, but I'll be all right. Oh, by the way, uh, here's that book you were reading to me the other day. Uh, read some more, will you, while I'm eating? Okay. Now, let's see. Um, where did I stop? Oh, here it is. <clears throat> for two hours, the crippled submarine had lain helplessly on the bottom. The men trapped inside were gripped with fear and despair. The air was so Here's heavy... Your toast, Mr. Benny. My toast? Well, it's about time, Rochester. What in the world took you so long? Have you ever tried making toast with sunshine and a magnifying glass? <laughs> oh. How about giving me back that fuse now, boss? Well, do you think you've learned your lesson? No, but the icebox is defrosted and that ain't gonna help the food. Oh, my goodness, I forgot all about that. Is all the food spoiled? Well, not all, but you know that fish you bought for tomorrow night? Yes. Well, he ain't gonna make it. <laughs> oh. Well, would the fish be all right if we had it tonight? Boss, you couldn't eat that fish if you cooked it in life, boy. <laughs> then just throw it out. Here's the fuse. Hurry and put it back. And take that miner's lamp off your hat. <laughs> Yes, sir. Now finish reading the book, Mary. Okay. The air was so heavy that breathing was labored. A violent current caught the submarine and rolled it to one side, filling the groggy men on the floor. It took almost all their strength to... Answer the door, Rochester. Answer the door, answer the door. Where, where? <laughs> quiet, quiet, Polly. Yeah, you ain't paying me. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. Go ahead, finish the book, right? Okay. It took almost all their strength to rise to their feet. Every man knew that hope of rescue was fading. Gee. Then suddenly they heard a faint tapping on the outside of the sun. Tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. A look of hope came into the men's eyes as the tapping continued. Pardon me, boss, but Inspector Flanagan is here to see you. Oh, the detective. Uh, excuse me, Mary. Hello, Inspector. Hello, Mr. Benny. I just dropped in to talk to you again about the robbery. Good, good. Come on, sit over here by the window. Yeah, thanks. Inspector, don't you ever have your oil changed? <laughs> huh? Nothing, nothing. How are you coming along on the case? Well, I came to tell you that I thought I caught the guy that robbed you. He fitted the description precisely. <laughs> he did? Yeah, he had a cauliflower ear, broken nose, scar on his cheek, and a little mole on his chin. <laughs> Scotchman or something? <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn. Uh, oh, uh-huh. Uh but he wasn't the guy that robbed you the $10,000. What'd you say? He wasn't the guy that robbed you of the $10,000. How'd you find out? Well, I searched him and he only had $9,870. <laughs> oh, well, I might as well tell you, Inspector, the man who robbed me called up and threatened my life. So I need a bodyguard and... Inspector! Inspector! Twinkle toes! Some detective. 
The robber calls me up, threatens to kill me. I tell the detective, and he walks out. Maybe he went to the florist. Yeah. Man, there's no time for jokes. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Rochester, my life is in danger. I might get shot at, and I need a bodyguard. Don't look at me. <laughs> Rochester, you're not a coward, are you? More than that, I'm a careful coward. <laughs> Well, anyway, I didn't mean you. I wondered if you knew anyone who'd be a good bodyguard. Well, now, let me see. I got it. You know, boss, Joe Lewis is in town. Joe Lewis? The heavyweight champion? Rochester, I could never get him for a bodyguard. I think you could if you worked it right, boss. I was talking to him the other day, and he told me he wants to be a radio comedian. Uh Uh-huh. So if you let him think that maybe he could be one, he'd come over and talk to you. Yeah. Then all you got to do is keep him here and stick close to him. Amalgamate, boss, amalgamate. <laughs> By golly, Rochester, that may be it. Why don't you call him up? Better than that, boss, I'll go over and see him personally. Good, good, and hurry. See, Mary, this may be the solution to all my worries. Joe Lewis for a bodyguard. Go on, finish reading the book for me, will you? Okay. <clears throat> a look of hope came into the men's eyes as the tapping continued. The air was so bad now that the breathing was almost impossible. In just a few seconds, it would be too late. Oh, my goodness. Suddenly, the steel hatch clanged open, and a blast of cool, fresh air revived the stricken men. The rescue device had worked. They were saved! Oh, boy. And thus ended another hair-raising adventure of our hero, Tom Swift. (laughs) Hot ziggity! What a guy! And you're always talking about little women. Why, if they were just... Hello, more... Mr. Benny. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Larry. Uh, hello, Larry. The door was open, so I just came on in. How are you feeling, Mr. Benny? A lot better, kid. Thanks for asking. I had to ask. It's in my contract. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Say, Mr. Benny, I've got a swell song for next Sunday's program. Would you like to hear it? I sure would, kid. Go ahead and sing it. All right. Oh, boy, that Tom Swift. He led a life just like I did. Jack Benny and his electric wife. Jack Benny in the dark. Kiss me once, then kiss me twice, then kiss me once again. It's been a long, long time. Haven't felt like this, my dear, since can't remember when. It's been a long, long time. You'll never know how many dreams I dreamed about you. Just how empty the feeling without you. So kiss me once, then kiss me twice, then kiss me once again. It's been a long, long time. My dreams have been so empty, dear, without you. Kiss me once, then kiss me twice, then kiss me once again. It's been a long, long time. At, uh... Very good, Larry. Use that number on the show. Okay, Mr. Benny. Well, I've got to go now. I promised my wife I'd help her with the housework. Oh, that's the spirit, Larry. You're really starting your married life off right. That's what her mother keeps telling me. Oh, so that's it. Look, kid, you tell her mother to keep her... Jack! (laughs) I'm only trying to advise them. Well, you're advising them all wrong. Mothers know best. For instance, Jack, take my mother. I will not. (laughs) Jack! (laughs) trying to say is that my father always helped my mother with a house cleaning. Mary, when your mother grabs your father by the back of the neck and wipes the floor with him, that's not house cleaning. (laughs) Believe me. Besides, how can she get him in all the corners? (laughs) And another thing about your mother... (laughs) What a million things she gave me. Well, I've got to run along now, Mr. Benny. Okay, so long, kid. So long. Jack, I know you don't like Mama, but I wish you wouldn't talk about her in front of people. Oh, Mary, I'm only kidding. If I didn't like your mother, would I have her picture hanging in my living room? You only hung it up when you lost the target to your dart game. (laughs) 
<laughs> he nearly lost that gag, too, there. <laughs> Mary, I'm improving, too. Last night when I was playing, I got one chin, one ear, and three nosies. <laughs> I'm getting better all the time. Answer the door, Rochester. Answer the door. Polly, Rochester isn't here. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, Don. Come on in. Hello, Jack, Mary. Hi, Don. Oh, I'm glad to see you looking better, Jack. Well, it's been quite a shock being uh, robbed of $10,000. Yeah, I was ribbed about it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it was, but I'm feeling fine now. By the way, Don, uh, would, you, would you like a cup of coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Hmm. Works for me, buys his coffee at the drugstore. <laughs> well, Jack... I'm gonna run along or I'll never get to that golf game in. Oh, are those your clubs, Mary? You know, I play golf occasionally, but just walking around the course doesn't keep me in trim. I like a game where there's a lot of jumping around. You mean tennis? No, checkers. <laughs> no, I thought your fingertips looked a little muscle-bound there. Don, you probably don't like golf because you don't play it well. What do you mean I don't play it well? Why, just last week I was in a tournament. We were approaching the 18th hole, and there I was on the edge of the green. Mm -hmm. The whole tournament was at stake, and I couldn't make up my mind which club to use. But my caddy, he knew what to do. Believe me, Don, I'm... Excuse me a minute. Hello? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, maybe so, but I thought that... The... <laughs> well, if you think so, okay. But wouldn't it be better if I just... <laughs> Well, all right, if you want it that way. Goodbye. <laughs> now, Don, as I started to tell you... Jack, who is that? My press agent, Steve Bradley. <laughs> you know, he used to talk so fast, I couldn't understand him. <laughs> well, I'm going out now and play a game of golf. I'll go with you, Mary. So long, Jack. So long, Don. Goodbye, Mary. Have a good time. I will. See, I wonder how Rochester's making out with Joe Lewis. I hope he can trick him into coming over here and be my bodyguard. I guess Rochester will know how to handle it. He always does. I'm sure glad I caught you at home, Joe. Why, well, I'm glad you came over, Rochester. <laughs> you know, Joe, so many things have happened since I saw you last. I don't know where to begin. Well, there's no hurry, Rochester. Would you like another drink? Well, I had two already. One more won't hurt you. Okay, pour it out. Thanks. Rochester, have you ever thought about being a prize fighter? No, I'm just drinking this milk to be friendly. <laughs> now, Joe, let's get down to business. You know, it's been rumored around you'd like to be a... Uh, a uh, big comedian. That's right. I want to make people laugh. I've been wanting to do that for years. Well, Joe, if you want to make people laugh, you've been going about it the wrong way. <laughs> Who told you that? Max Smelling, Tony Galeno, Jim Braddock, and Buddy Bass. <laughs> That's who. Well, them fellas have no sense of humor. <laughs> pretty hard to laugh with a referee counting over you. I wouldn't know. That never happened to me. Never? Never. Joe, remember that first fight you had with Max Smelling? Mm-hmm. What happened in the 12th round? What happened? That's the one page I tore out of my scrapbook. <laughs> anyway, Joe, if you want to be a big comedian, Mr. Benny's the man to get you started. Do you think so? He'll not only get you started, he'll stick close to you. Yes, sir. Awful close. <laughs> Well, this is going to be a lifesaver. You ain't kidding. <laughs> Come on, let's go over to Mr. Benny's house and talk to him. Okay, I'll get my hat and coat. Don't forget your gloves. I got them right here in my pocket. Not the social ones, the business ones, the big ones, the fat ones. <laughs> well, you know, the fighting ones. Come on, Joe, let's go. <laughs>
20 minutes to 7. Dark out, and Rochester isn't back yet. Hmm, that robber did threaten me. Maybe I ought to hold these darts in my hand, just in case. <laughs> I... I wonder if... <laughs> well, another nosy. <laughs> Doggone, I wish that the... That must be Rochester. Come in! Hiya, Jackson. What are you doing up so late? Oh, oh, hello, Phil. I'm, I'm glad you dropped by. Well, I can only stay a minute. I just came over to invite you to a costume party I'm throwing Saturday night. A costume party? Yeah, and Alice is going to put on a little girl's outfit and be little Bo Peep. Oh, that's cute. What are you going to be, Phil? I'm going to put light bulbs in my ears and come as a pinball machine. <laughs> a pinball machine? Yeah, by 11 o'clock, I'm tilled it anyway. <laughs> You know, these, these costume parties always throw me. I never know what to be. Why don't you spruce up a little bit and come as Father Time? <laughs> don't be funny. Come on in, Phil. We'll sit down and talk, huh? Oh, there's the phone. Excuse me. Hello? Hello, is my daddy there? Your daddy? Oh, oh is this Phil Harris, the little girl? Uh-huh. Is this Mr. Benny? It sure is. Oh, Mr. Benny, I'm sorry about you being robbed of $10,000. My daddy said it was your own fault. My? My fault? Hmm? Yes, my daddy says if you paid him what he's worth, you wouldn't have all that money lying around. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Can I talk to my daddy now? Yeah, just a minute, honey. Phil, Phil, it's for you. It's your little girl. Okay. Hello, honey. Hello, hot shot. <laughs> Anything wrong, baby? Uh-huh. I got my dolly on the sidewalk, and it's all broken. Oh, well, that's a shame. Which dolly was it? The pretty one with the long eyelashes. And the curly blonde hair? Yes, the one you said looks just like you. <laughs> well, Dowadee will get you another one just like me. Oh, goody. When are you coming home? Right away. Well, Mommy wants you to stop by the store and get a loaf of bread, a head of lettuce, and some corn. All right, honey. Does she want corn on the cob or canned corn? Mommy says when it comes to corn, to leave that up to you. <laughs> oh. oh, well, okay, darling. I'll get it. Goodbye. Bye, hot shot. <laughs> Ah, oh, gee, Phil, your, your daughter's so cute. How old is she? I don't know, Jackson, but last year she was three. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, then she's four now. Could be. It could be. <laughs> yes, sir, they sure grow up, don't they? Oh, boss, boss, he's here. He is, Rochester? Yeah, he's waiting in the den. Oh, excuse me a minute, will you, Phil? Yeah, I gotta go anyway. So long, Jackson. So long, Phil. Uh, Rochester, have Joe Lewis come in. Okay, but remember, boss, he don't know he's gonna be your bodyguard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He only came over here because he thinks you're going to get him started as a comedian. I know, I know. So, make him think he's funny. I will, I will, don't worry. Uh, 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 call him in. Yes, sir. Come on in, Joe. Joe, I'd like you to meet Mr. Jack Benny. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> what a delivery. Oh, boy. How do you feel, Joe? Oh, fine. Fine. <laughs> That's a honey. Anybody else would have said pretty good, but you ad lib fine. Oh, boy, what a gem. Boss, boss, don't overdo it. <laughs> Say, Joe, Joe, how long have you been out here in California? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> I was still laughing at fine, you know. That was dynamite. Huh? Well, boss, I'll leave you two alone to discuss business. All right, Rochester. Say, Joe, Joe, I've got a, a little proposition to make to you. What's the proposition? Well, you see, I'm a little more experienced as a comedian than you are, so if anyone ever starts pulling jokes at your expense, well, I'll sort of help you out, you see. Mm-hmm. And naturally, you're a little younger and stronger than I am, so... Anyone start punching me or picking a fight with me? <laughs> Is it you? You'll help me out. But Mr. Benny, why should anybody want to start a fight with you? Because I'm such a heel. I mean, <laughs> uh... 
I mean, you see, you see, Joe, there are so many people who are jealous of me. But I thought everybody liked you. You're so nice and so kind and so free with your money. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was funny. Why didn't you laugh? <laughs> my money. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, Joe, <laughs> uh, Joe, uh, getting down to business, how would you feel about doing comedy on my program? I like it very much. Well, let's discuss this thing thoroughly before... Hmm. I wonder who that can be. Oh, Joe, would you mind taking a little walk with me? Well, to? To the front door. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Aren't you crowding me a little bit, Mr. Benny? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, pardon me. Just a minute. Okay, Benny, you asked me. What? I told you what had happened if you blabbed to the cops about me sticking you up, and now I'm going to give it to you. Take that. Ooh. And that. Ooh. Joe. Joe, he's beating me up. Fight with him. Oh, I can't fight with just anybody. Who did he ever lick? <laughs> Now, squeal on me, will you, Benny? Take that. Ooh, another nosy, another nosy. <laughs> Polly, you're supposed to be on my side. Take that. Ooh, and that. Ooh, Joe, Joe, please don't just stand there. Please do something. But, Mr. Benny, I can't fight with uh, no one. He would have to get a reputation for himself. Well, he doesn't have to get it on me, for goodness <laughs> sake. Look, take that. Ow, and that. Ooh, stop, and that. Stop. Joe, help me. I'm warning you for the last time, Benny. The next time you open your mouth to the cops, you're going to get more than this. Yes, sir. And just so you don't forget it, take this. Ooh. Mr. Ooh. Benny. Mr. Benny. Get up and go to your corner. <laughs> Mr. Benny. Mr. Benny, get out. Well, if you don't, there's only one thing left for me to do. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four. Joe, Joe, you can stop already. I'm feeling better. Anyway, I got to go to the Maskers now. Do a show at six p.m. on another network. Good night, folks. <laughs> Benny program with Mary Livingston, Don Wilson, Bill Harris and his orchestra, and Jack Benny. Larry Stevens, young singing star of the program, steps forward now to sing Stars in Your Eyes. Larry? I see stars
Fernando Deep in your eyes Love will spark to continue to shine No matter what dawn may bring No matter what you may say there's always one little thing that always gives you a Forces Radio Service.